Hello everyone, here we are again with the 10th edition rules. For now, we are going to the weapon special rules or weapon abilities and after that the universal stratagems that everyone can use. Ok, let's wrap it up so everyone can be ready when the 10th edition drops. So we can play as fast as we can and as accurate as we can, right? Here we are, at the weapon abilities. The first one, Assault. When a weapon has the Assault rule, it can shoot after advancing. So with this kind of weapons, little bit longer threat range. Usually 1d6 inches longer. Rapid Fire. You usually gonna see a rule, Rapid Fire X, where the X represents a number. Ok, what's the deal with this one? The weapon has a range, for example 24. And when the enemy unit that you are shooting at is within half range, so within 12, you can add Additional number of shots, the additional number is the number that is represented by the X. Ok, next one, ignores cover. Surprisingly, this weapon is ignoring the benefits of cover. Wow! But you still have to see the enemy that you are shooting at. Twin linked. When a weapon has the ability of twin linked, you can reveal the wounds of this weapon. So it wounds the target much more reliably. Let's check on the next one, pistol. Pistol weapons has two rules. Infantry units can use this weapon even if they are within engagement range. This is the first. And the next one, if you are shooting your pistol, you cannot shoot any other weapons for that model, except in case of monsters or vehicles. Yes, there are some vehicles that has a pistol, like the Invictus Tactical Warsuit. Torrent weapons. When the weapon has the ability called Torrent, this weapon is automatically hitting the target. Ok, next one. Lethal hits. With this weapon, when you score a critical hit, you automatically wounding the target. You don't have to roll a wound roll. Critical hit is when you roll an unmodified hit roll of 6. Lance. When a weapon has the lance ability, it knows this. If you made the charge move in this turn, you can add one to your wound rolls. Indirect fire. Weapons with this ability don't have to see the target that they are shooting at. So you can easily shoot down that 5 Gretchen that is hiding inside of a building. But there are some drawbacks. Two things. First of all, in normal cases you can shoot with this weapon normally. But if you are shooting at a target that you cannot see, then you have to subtract one from your hit rolls. And also, the target has the benefit of cover, even if they are not standing in cover directly. Next ability, Precision, is an ability when you can hit precisely. But what does it mean? If there is a character visible and within range to this weapon, you can target that character and you can allocate the attacks to that character, instead of following the normal attack sequence. So no bodyguard, no lone operative, basically sniper. Blast. Weapons with blast ability has two rules. First one, you can add one to the attack characteristic for every five model in the unit that you are targeting. So if you are targeting a unit, for example 20 orc boys, then you can add 4 additional attacks to this weapon. Ok, and the next one. This weapon can never target a unit that you are in engagement range with it. So for example, your Hellbrute has a blast weapon and he is fighting in melee with 10 assault intercessors, he can shoot every weapon into the assault intercessors except the blast. Next one, Melta. Melta X. The X will usually represent a number. When a weapon has the ability called Melta X, is a little bit similar to Rapid Fire. But in this case, if the target is within half range, you can add the X to the damage characteristic of that weapon. So the closer you are, the more damage you deal. Next one, Heavy. If you check, weapons with the Heavy rule usually are hitting worse than the other weapons. But if the unit remains stationary, you can add one to your hit rolls. So it's a heavy weapon, which is a little bit hard to aim when you are moving. But if you are remaining stationary, this weapon hitting much better. Almost 17% better. Next one, Hazardous. Well, let's just say, this weapon is not really safe to shoot. After you resolved all attacks from this unit, for each Hazardous weapon that you used, roll 1d6. And if the result is 1, and on the result of 1, the model that used this weapon is destroyed. Unless it is a monster, a character, or a vehicle. In this case, the user suffers 3 mortal wounds. So yeah, it's not the safest weapon to use, but usually these kind of weapons has really great strength, damage, or even armor penetration. High risk, high reward. Next one, devastating wounds. This is a really great one. If you roll a critical wound, 
which is a wound roll of 6, then your opponent can't make saving throws because the damage that would have caused by this weapon turns into mortal wounds, equal to the damage characteristic of this weapon. So on a wound roll of 6, it deals mortal wounds. Ok, and the next one, sustained hits. Weapons will have an ability sustain hits X. The X will be represented with a number. In this case, what does it mean? If you score a critical hit, the unmodified hit roll of 6, then you score additional hits according to the number of X. For example, my weapon has the ability sustain hits 2. Then I roll a 6, it scores 3 hits, 1 the normal and 2 additional hits because the sustained hits 2. Simple as that. Ok, extra attacks. If a weapon has this rule, the bearer can attack with this weapon even if he uses another weapon. For example, I have a power sword with 5 attacks. I attack 5 times, but I have a chain sword with 3 attacks and it has the extra attacks ability, I can attack it with 3 times, even though I fought with my power sword. Extra attacks are really good. Anti. Weapons will have this ability anti plus a keyword plus a number plus a plus sign. Ok, for example, anti-infantry 3+. If you are targeting an infantry unit, then this weapon will wound on a 3+, disregarding the toughness characteristic of the enemy unit or the strength characteristic of this weapon. But not just that, it will score wounds, but it will score critical wounds, if the keywords are matching. There are many types, but just some examples. Anti-vehicle 4+, it will wound the vehicle on a 4+, and it will score a critical wound. Anti-psyker 2+, if you are using it against a Psyker, it will wound a Psyker on a 2 plus and even score a critical wound. Which is really really strong, because just imagine, you can wound Magnus on a 2 plus with a simple stake by a sister or an, or an inquisitor. Nice stuff. Oh, the time just flying. We went through all of the weapon abilities. Now let's check on the stratagems. Because some of these are really gems. Stratagems are buffs or abilities that you can use if you spend a certain amount of combat point that you can get in the command phase or even with spells and other abilities. One important thing, the same stratagem can be used more than once in a phase, just to know. There are four categories of stratagems. First one, battle tactic. This one is to bolster your units. You can give out buffs for attack or defense in critical moments. There is other type, epic deed. These stratagems can be used by individual models who are performing heroic deeds. For example, a space marine captain, an Eldar farseer, or an orc war boss. The other one, the third one, war gear. Usually these are the stratagems that you can use with a specialized item. For example, the Votans has a med pack. And there is a war gear stratagem called combat surgery. With this one, in your movement phase, you can resurrect D3 guys, which is nice. And the last one, Strategic Ploy. These are rather specialized stratagems that you can only use in certain cases, but they are really strong in that case. So more specialized than the battle tactic, but usually give better buffs. Ok, and there is another type of categorization for them, that you can use in either player's turn, that you can use in your turn, or those ones that you can use in your opponent's turn. Let's start with those ones that you can use in either player's turn. First one, Command Reroll, for one common point. You can use the command reroll to reroll a hit roll, a wound roll, a damage roll, a saving throw, an advance roll, a charge roll, a desperate escape test, a hazardous test, and you can reroll the dice when you're determining how many attacks will that weapon make. For example, in case of this weapon shoots d6 times, you roll the one, you can reroll that. In case of a charge roll, you have to reroll both dices. Ok, the next one, counter offensive, for two command points. You can use this one in a fight phase after an enemy unit just fought. You select a unit from your army that is eligible to fight and fight with it. This is great because you get charged 2 or 3 times at least one of the places you will hit first. It can be ok if you have a decent melee. The third one, epic challenge. When a character unit from your army is within engagement range with one or more attached units, so units that have a character within it, then you can target the character. So in this case, all your attacks have the precision ability. Ok, let's check on the ones that are happening in your turn. Insane Bravery. We already talked about this one in the part 1, but basically, when you are failing a battle shock test in your command phase, you can use this one, and the unit counts as automatically pass the battle shock test. This one can be a game changing for one command point, but if almost every unit in your army is battle shocked, well, this won't going to save your bacon. 
grenades. You can use this one in your shooting phase. You have to select one of your units that have the grenades ability. Okay, and after that, you select one enemy unit that can be in engagement range with any of your units. It has to be visible and has to be within 8. After that, you roll 6 dice and on each 4th plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. Mathematically, you can calculate it around 3 mortal wounds per use. Okay, and let's check out the last one, Tank Shock. You can use this one after you made the charge roll with one of your vehicles. After that, you select one enemy unit that is in engagement range with this one, so unit that you charged. If you made the multi-charge, you select one of those units, and you, you can roll the number of D6s, equal the number, the melee weapon strength characteristic of this unit. But if your strength characteristic is greater than the enemy's toughness characteristic, you can add two additional D6s. After that, you roll these dices, and on each 5 plus, that enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. But maximum 6 mortal wounds can be caused by this way, per use. Okay, and the last one, these are the ones that you can only use in your opponent's face. So basically, these are reactions. First one, for one common point, rapid ingress. This one is really easy. At the end of your opponent's movement phase, you select one unit from your strategic reserves or from your reinforcements, and that unit can arrive to the battle, like it was your movement phase. That's it. But one important thing, the unit can only arrive in a turn that it could have. It cannot arrive in your opponent's first turn. Okay, next one, Overwatch for one command point. You can use it in your opponent's movement or in your opponent's charge phase. Okay, when a unit ends its normal movement, advance, falling back or charge move, you can use this one. Select one unit that is within 24. After that, you can shoot at that unit as if it were your shooting phase. But there is a sad thing. You can only score hits on a hit roll of 6, irrespective to any abilities, ballistic skills or things like that. And you can only use this stratagem once per turn. So no both in the movement and charge phase, just once. Ok, one of the last ones, go to ground, for one command point. You can use this one when your opponent is shooting at one of your infantry units. Ok, and what does it do for them? Your unit will have the benefit of cover, even if they are standing in the middle of a square or in the middle of a field, but also they will all have a 6 plus invulnerable save. So it's something. Let's check on the next one, smoke screen, for one command point. You can use it in your opponent's shooting phase when one of the enemy units are shooting at your unit. You can use it on a unit that has the smoke keyword or the smoke ability. Ok, and what does it do for this one command point? Your unit will have the benefit of cover, but also the ability of stealth. So you will have a better armor save until the end of the phase, and also, every time that the enemy is shooting at you, he has to subtract one from his hit rolls. So all in all, this one is also a protective one, but a little bit different than a go to ground. Ok, and let's check on the last one, Heroic Intervention. This one is a little bit expensive, this one costs 2 command points. You can use it in your opponent's charge phase, after an enemy unit ends a charge move. After that unit ended its charge move, you can select one unit within 6 of that enemy unit and that unit can attempt to make a charge against that unit that just finished the charging. This one is really strong if you can make your charge roll, because then you will have a fight first so you can start the fighting in your opponent's fight phase. This one is spicy. However, one important thing, you cannot select vehicle units for heroic intervention unless they have the Volker keyword, for example, Dreadnoughts, Walkers, or Death Dreads. Ok, now we are armed to the thief with knowledge. At least for now, that's all we have. But soon the 10th edition drops. Don't forget to pre-order your Leviathan box set in the 10th of June. Thank you for watching and listening. If you like what I do, hit the like and subscribe button as hard as if it would have been Erebus's skull, and even hit the little bell. If you don't hit the little bell, usually I upload a video on every week. I hope I see you in the next one.